All right, guys, welcome back to Down of the Frame. This is part one of a three-part series in which I discovered a bunch of problems with my washer and dryer, electrical, plumbing, and exhaust ductwork. So we're gonna be going through what exactly to do to fix this washer and dryer's electrical, and I hope you guys enjoy. Make sure you put those comments in the section down below. Let's get down to the frame. Today was a impromptu video where I was working on doing a TikTok and or making a TikTok about fixing a drainage problem with our washer and dryer. Before I did that, I pulled the washer and dryer forward just to take a look at things and uh, holy cow, what a world of safety and code violations. Looking back here, my initial thing I found was, oh wow, they have this is a three wire connection. It's a 240 volt dryer. Uh, they're using, there's no neutral going to this, uh, which is great. And then it's not even in the proper connector hole. So it's just pinched in between the metal there. Very great. Then that 240 volt outlet. I don't know if it has four wires going to it. I believe it does because I can actually see the wire here, but I'll have to check in a minute. So we got to replace this cord, clean back here. But also I noticed all this dust and I'm like, well, what's going on over here? Well, our dryer vent has a hole in it right there, as well as the dryer vent piping is completely like crushed. Lots to do on a Sunday that I plan to just do chores, but you gotta make a Home Depot trip, get some stuff, we'll make it safe. Should only take a couple hours, but without further ado, let's get down to the frame. We're gonna remove that cord and see if we can get a cord at Home Depot. I've shut all the power off to it. It was a 30 amp breaker, I shut that off. And then it was a 15 amp down to there. Although I'm pretty sure they ran some 12 gauge. So that could be a 20 amp if need be. I'm going to check to make sure the power's off. I do want to replace that though, because that's a, it needs a cover on that as well as it's that outlet's pretty beat up. All right guys. So as you can see, they used some crimp ons right there, which is fine but they have the ground jumped out to the neutral. And the reason for that is they want potential current that touches the case to travel back to the panel and not to people. But we want a dedicated ground. Actually, wow, they use the ground as one of the hots. So that's wicked, that's wicked against the code there. Very, very wrong. So obviously you have your black, which is a hot uh, leg of 120 the red, which is a leg of 120, and then your neutral in the middle and your ground over here. So we're gonna replace this uh, because it's just not safe. I have family that lives here and it'll eventually be a rental, so we're gonna make this safe. Uh, it's also not in the connector uh, hole, so it should be. So we're gonna go to Home Depot, get another HDX cord. You guys should be, be pretty familiar with uh, the way this is hooked up if you watched my electric oven install, so check that video out. It goes over a lot of this. I'm just gonna kinda graze over it in this video but yeah we'll get this uh cleaned up and uh get down there and take a look at that outlet uh that receptacle there that 240 volt so home depot trip before i go do the home depot trip i'm just disconnecting things and seeing what parts i need but i found this interesting there's like you look down here it's kind of hard to focus but that like black strip of stuff that's actually that's lint spun around <laughs> And there's a big chunk of lint back there too. So we'll clean that out. It was supposed to be a dryer maintenance video. Uh, so we'll see what we can do for that. But Get that ball of lint. The important thing that we need to keep in mind, this is a neutral bonding jumper. So that's gonna bond the neutral onto the grounded assembly or onto the metal casing. And what that does was supposed to, like I said earlier, bring any current that accidentally got onto the metal, bring it back to the panel. So, uh, but that's a code violation. So what we're gonna do is disconnect that, isolate this because it's not actually on the oven, there was like a metal plate that did the bonding jumper. This seems to be a wire, so we're just gonna cap that off and tuck it back in there. 
and then we're going to have our dedicated ground going to this and back to the breaker. So it's going to have dedicated neutral, dedicated 120 uh, leg one and dedicated 120 leg two, all in the right colors with a connector in it. Uh, and it should be good. So hopefully once I find out what this type of outlet this is, there'll be a plug at Home Depot and we'll get that cleaned up. Okay, some good news and some bad news. The good news is they ran four wire to here. Bad news is this is not a four wire receptacle. So we're going to have to get a four wire 30 amp receptacle. Then this thing's pretty beat up. So we're going to replace that too. So we checked the voltage and it looks good, 122. Moving on to the 240 volt outlet, which is a NEMA 1430R uh, by Leviton and or Leviton. And it's a, uh, it's an outdated looking outlet, but it works. Got that plugged in. Uh, I like the HDX cables are actually pretty beefy, but as you can see right here, I'm starting to realize that there's a problem. That cord is hitting the ground. It's really not placed well. What I also did was add in a new connector there, which it didn't have before. The wire was actually just snaked underneath the electrical cover. So I'm putting in this new cord grip connector uh, and that's gonna hold the cord. It's gonna make sure that none of the terminals are being pulled on by the cord, makes it much more safe. Uh, we're actually attaching a dedicated ground that's gonna go all the way back to the panel now, making it much safer. And we're wiring color for color here, which means we're doing red to red, black to black and white to white. One last thing to do here is to cut the crimp off the end of the neutral bonding jumper because we're no longer gonna need that. We do not want the neutral being bonded with the ground. So we are going to wire nut that and tape that up and then just stick it back there into a, a safer little corner and uh, forget about it. And this is kind of when I realized that I'm gonna to have to do something. So the receptacle is definitely gonna be in the way of the dryer vent, as well as it's not going to reach the new cord that I put on. Uh, the cord was too short, so I'm going to move the receptacle. Uh, I was pointing out the height of where they ran that wire. Luckily enough, I was able to see it. So I'm gonna drill this hole a few inches above where they ran the wire through the wall. Uh, I probably could have used a smaller hole saw, <laughs> but I really did not want to fight with this. This is actually not just a four wire. It is a five wire cable that they ran. So there's an extra conductor in there that I'm not going to use. So uh, I'm not too worried about it. Eventually this closet is going to get redone with a, a pretty big renovation. So I'm going to basically grab the wire, pull it up through the wall and pull it out that hole. I'm going to use a snake to do that and then I'm going to be able to mount the receptacle the right way up, out of the way of the future dryer uh, vent. It's going to be nice and clean.
So we're good. Let's turn this thing on. All right, guys, that's gonna be it. But you know, I do have some comments. That was a pretty easy fix, but it made a big difference safety wise. So if you just bought a house, go ahead and take a look at the back of your appliances and check those electrical connections. If they look a bit sus, maybe call an electrician and have that sorted out. Was an impromptu video. It is three parts. So you have your electrical, we do the dryer duct, and then we also have the plumbing. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned for those videos or go find them on the channel. Otherwise, guys, we'll see you next time on Down in the Frame.